I will talk briefly about uh, some of the policies we put in place to make sure that we can develop and build our e-government and uh, I will focus on three sort of aspects. First, how to make sure that people have the access and the skills to make benefit of the services. Uh, secondly, how to set up the legal framework to enable digital government building. And thirdly, how to set up the governance to make sure that exactly everybody is able to make the most of technology within the government. First of all, access and the skills. Um, for us it's been always very sort of clear that uh, our key job as a government is to uh, build the enabling conditions to really make sure that you know, people have the means and opportunity to go online, uh, use the services online, whether from public sector or private sector, and through that to really sort of benefit from what digital society can offer. Uh, very practically speaking, this has meant a few things. First of all, uh, for example, working with uh, telecom companies and the industry to make sure that there's a fast and, and increasingly faster access to internet available in the whole of country. Uh, anything from uh, you know broadband networks to uh, 3 and 4G networks these days. And we have been quite lucky in Estonia case that uh, really, despite being a small country, we have sort of big distances to cover. And again, with the private sector, we have managed this with literally the whole of country is covered with internet by this point. And this is crucial. So you can even be in the live, choose to live in a far away, far away forest, but still, you know, again, get access to anything online. But besides the sort of internet access, the skills are even more important that you, you have to be able to do something online. So that's why, again, together with the private sector, we have taken good care to invest over the years a lot into training and retraining of people, uh, making sure that they have the sort of uh, right knowledge to use uh, things online. It started very sort of simply uh, by um, you know, some public campaigns and awareness programs and, and really training modules in uh, various cities around the country but really sort of introducing people to internet. What is internet? What is computer? How to use it? What is electronic identity? How to even read a newspaper online? So the key thing that we have found out is that um, a lot about uh, the skills is about motivation. So if people understand that they have something to do in internet, they are very eager to learn. So for example, for all those grannies out there, um, when Skype came around, it became very sort of interesting for them to actually go to internet and start using computers because finally they had a chance to talk to their grandchildren. That gave them motivation to learn more and even become you know, regular internet users. So that's why really a lot of what we have done is awareness building. What services are there? What can you do online? Um, you know, why is it useful for you personally? And if that is in place, people exactly are eager to go online and, and the government can go online because if there are no users, if people don't have the skills and means, well, you, it's really hard to have a digital government in the first place um, because if nobody uses it, there's no benefit that you as a government can gain. Secondly, there's the legal frameworks and um, and legal frameworks are crucial because uh, you know, they really sort of set the rules and regulations how things are working for the people's point of view as well as government's point of view. And um, again, legal frameworks usually are the, can be enablers or can be barriers. Our view has always been that you know, let's rather trust the engineers and uh, develop laws and regulations that allow us to make the most of technology, not limit us in that aspect. And so the hard part has been that how to do the laws that uh, don't follow, let's say, paper logic, as it is called, but rather exactly laws that take into account what are the technological possibilities and how to uh, really enable government procedures, services, back office operations to use the latest technology out there, so basically exactly to get the efficiency gains. I can give an example. Um, so um, you can do a very simple test even in your regulations and laws in your country. Um, Take a look into the laws and see how many times something like paper or document has been spelled. Each time it's there, basically there's a paper logic involved. Instead, it could be you know, about data or information, so, uh, because that's what really IT is about. So approaching the legal frameworks from a technology point of view is really, really crucial. Easier said than done. But again, you have to, if you start with this, it's very easy then exactly to set up the right sort of uh, fundamental sort of enabling conditions in place. I should also say one more thing about Estonia and the legal framework that um, we don't have really uh, special IT laws in our country. Rather, we have worked with other laws to make sure that they are sort of IT friendly. So to give an example, the Public Information Act in our case is not about how to access data online, but rather how to access any data and how to safeguard any data. 
And finally, and the third sort of block of policies uh, revolves around governance, how to set up the conditions that the government can move fast enough in digital front, but at the same time, uh, you know, that there's a strategy in place and, and it's a coordinated action. We have tried and experimented with quite a few sort of different models of governance, uh, IT governance within government, but what we have resorted to in the end is sort of a hybrid model, that we combine a top-level strategic stewardship with uh, bottom-ups sort of innovation and, and development. Fundamentally, in our government, each minister is a digital minister. Each minister is responsible for IT and service development in their field, but it all happens on the coherent joint strategy for the whole of government. So there is a national digital agenda in place, and that is being stewarded and coordinated by Prime Minister's office. And the Prime Minister himself is the digital agenda minister. So the whole idea is that we have taken good care how to really sort of make sure that we stay on the same page but enable this kind of bottom-up sort of exactly very user-friendly, user-focused innovation to flourish from the agencies that have the best understanding what the users need. So meaning really bottom-up and, and, and each and every agency. So I think you'll hear more about in other sections about the specific platforms and the components we have used, but overall this has been those of the mainstream directions of our policy to enable digital government to flourish.